Okay, so this is the second video for section 2.2, and I've deliberately made this a second one because interpolation, uh, example five here is our example of interpolation, is always uh, a tricky one. It's always the thing that uh, people tend to get stuck on. And I think the reason is it's very difficult to understand it from an example like this in a written textbook. Um, it's much easier if you've got someone talking you through it. So I'm hoping this uh, this is going to be one of the most useful one of these videos. So let's have a look. In this situation, they're asking us to find the upper quartile in example five. Okay, so this is the length of time to the nearest minute spent on the internet each evening by a group of students shown in this table. So here we go, length of time spent on the internet, and here are the frequencies. They're asking us to find the upper quartile. We could find the median by interpolation. Uh, part B, they're asking us to find a percentile by interpolation. We could find upper quartile, lower quartile, you know, and anything. Um, once you've got the principle, we should be able to apply it in different cases. Now, the biggest bit of advice I've got for you is don't, whatever you do, don't try and memorize a formula for interpolation. Usually, that uh, will mean that you're not understanding interpolation properly and usually it risks making mistakes because the formulas are so complicated that I think you know by the time we've got the idea of interpolation and, and turned it into a formula there are so many very similar things but not quite the same things in the formula and the formula's got a lot of symbols the chances are you put something in the wrong place on the other hand if you get the principle of interpolation the way I'm going to explain it now um, it's not too tricky to hang on to I hope so here's the idea We've got this frequency table, um, 30 to 31, 32 to 33, 34 to 36, 37 to 39. And in the frequency column, we've got 2, 25, 30, and 13, okay? So if we add these numbers up, we get 70. We've got a total frequency of 70. So following our little pink box here, we're uh, grouped continuous data from a frequency table, so we're just going to do three quarters of 70. And three quarters of 70 is 52.5. So our upper quartile is piece of data number 52.5, okay, or the 52 and a half piece of data. That's what we're looking for, okay? Now, if we go through our table, the first two pieces of data are in here, the first 27 pieces of data, two and two add 25, are in these two classes, um, and so 27 and 30 takes us up to 57, doesn't it? So the 30, for the 52 and a half piece of data is somewhere in this row of the table, okay? So that's the first thing, and that is uh, GCSE style, find the interval which contains the median sort of reasoning, isn't it? It's exactly the same so far. And we've done that to find out where the median is, oh, sorry, where the upper quartile is. Now, what we know then is the upper quartile is somewhere in this class. Now, remember 34 to 36, this class ends at 33, this class starts at 34. So this class actually goes from 33.5 up to 36.5, okay? So all we know is that our upper quartile is somewhere in this group here, okay? And we also know our upper quartile is piece of data number 52.5, okay? Now, let's think about it like this. Before this group, we've had 27 pieces of data, okay? That's, that's from these two rows of the table. So 27 pieces of data so far. And by the end of this group, by the time we've added on those 30 pieces of data, we're up to piece of data number 57, okay? So before this group, 27 pieces of data. And then there are 30 pieces of data spread out between 33.5 and 36.5, okay? So why isn't it good enough to just say, well, the median is somewhere in this group? Well, imagine it like this. If I knew the median was piece of data number 28, sorry, or, or the upper quartile, whatever it is we're looking for. If we're looking for piece of data number 28, I know we're not, we're looking for piece of data number 52 and a half, but let's imagine it was piece of data number 28. Well, we'd expect that to be down at this end of the range, wouldn't we? We'd expect it to be closer to 33.5. If, it was, if we were looking for piece of data number 56, we'd expect it to be up here, close to 36.5. Now, we don't know. We know we've got 30 pieces of data on this line, but we don't know anything about how those 30 pieces of data are spread out. They could be all bunched up here. They could be all bunched up here. They could be all bunched up in the middle. They could be all over the place. We don't know. But it's not a bad assumption that those 30 pieces of data are somehow spread out between 33.5 and 36.5. Okay, so the key idea with interpolation, the thing that's absolutely vital to the whole 
concept is we're going to assume that those 30 pieces of data are evenly spread out between 27 and uh, between 33.5 and 36.5. So the first piece of data is 1 30th of the way along. The second piece of data is uh, 2 30th of the way along. By the time we get halfway between 33.5 and 36.5, we're at the 15th piece of data and so on. Okay, so we're going to assume that we've got 30 pieces of data evenly spread out in this gap here. All right. So if we were looking for the 28th piece of data, we'd want 1 30th of the distance from 33.5 to 36.5. Um, if we were looking for the 15th uh, piece of data out of those 30, well, that would be piece of data number 42, wouldn't it? 27 add 15 is 42. So if we wanted the 42nd piece of data out of these 70, that would be halfway between 33.5 and 36.5. That's the principle we're working on here. So this is how it's going to work in practice. I'm starting again with a fresh diagram for this question. I've got piece of data number 27 at one end, piece of data number 57 at the other end. This is 33.5 to 36.5. And I've tried to put the 52.5 roughly in the right place, closer to the 57 than the 27. If you don't put it anywhere near the right place, it doesn't really matter. You can still do the interpolation question, but it helps you to picture what's happening. So this gap here from 27 up to 52.5 is a gap of 25.5, okay? so. From 27 up to 52.5, that's how much you've got to add on. And obviously you do that from this one, take away this one. From 27 up to 57 is a gap of 30, okay? So what fraction of the distance have we gone along here? We've gone 25.5 out of 30, okay? That's, that's what fraction of the distance we've gone along the bottom of the line. Now, if the data is evenly spaced out, we're going to have gone the same distance from 33.5 up to 36. Okay, if the um, bottom of this class is 33.5, the top is 36.5. If we make the assumption the data is evenly spaced out and we go 25 and a half pieces of data out of 30 pieces of data, we're going to go this, that fraction, 25 and a half out of 30, we're going to go that same proportion, the same fraction, the same um, percentage, if you like, along the top of the line. So it's that fraction of... Um, the distance from 36.5 to 33.5, three, okay? So this distance here is that fraction of three, okay? Now, once you know that distance there, you can work out where your upper quartile is because it's 33.5 plus that distance there, okay? And that's the whole idea with interpolation.